introduce you to Mark Kamenow. Well, thank you very much for coming out today and for supporting uh, the chamber. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces, and so you'll probably be familiar with my approach today, which will be talking about new things that have happened since the last time we were here last year, what's uh, coming soon, and then some bigger economic development issues that the town is facing, and we're, we're efficient, and Barbara doesn't pull me off. We'll have plenty of time uh, for questions. Just going to get some notes, if you don't mind. Okay, so... Let's recap things. What's new in West Hartford? So new retail. Hopefully these are familiar places, places you've uh, been to. All right. All right. BK and Company moved to Farmington Avenue, and we've got some new stores and a new Marshall's Home Good in Bishop's Corner. New retail. Dogology on uh, Sedgwick. Wolfgang in Blueback. Pet Value in Corbett's Corner. There's a theme there, right? We love our pets, don't we? We also love our beverages. <laughs> Total Wine in Corbin's Corner and the third uh, Harvest Wine and Spirits, third store in West Hartford. They have their country store on Oakwood Ave and their first uh, shop on Farmington Avenue. Okay, lots of new restaurants. In Blueback Square, Bar Louie. And across the street from Barb Louie is Goldberg's uh, Gourmet, second location for Goldberg. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with their flagship store on um, restaurant on New Britain Avenue. Then India recently opened on Memorial, very close to uh, the Delamar. On Farmington Avenue, Hartford Baking just opened. And on LaSalle Road across the street from each other, Noble and & Company and Savoy. Noble and Company, it's the same ownership as McLadden's, and Savoy is the uh, newest Max creation. Okay, so how about Park Road? We've got Park and Oak at the corner of Oak Wood and uh, Park, Prospect Cafe, and Hot Oven Pizza and Panini. And in Elmwood, New Asia built a new restaurant, moved across the street, literally just across the street to a bigger spot. And uh, on New Park Avenue, we've got Chick-fil-A. I'm sure there are others here in the room that went there three times the first week they were open, like <laughs> me. Right? You can, you can admit it. We're amongst friends. Okay. Okay, another theme. Financial services. Black Advisors on LaSalle Road. Nutmeg State Credit Union on Farmington Avenue in the center. And then Caldwell Banker moved from LaSalle Road over to Farmington Avenue. And, of course, one of our sponsors, Simsbury Bank on uh, Farmington Avenue and Sunset Triangle, and Charles Schwab in the new building at 11 South Main. And uh, as we discussed last year, you know, uh, lots of restaurants, but also lots of places to uh, work off those pounds. Um, health and fitness throughout town, Pure Bar in Blueback Square, Star Yoga on Park Road, Orange Theory in Bishop's Corner, and Fearless Fitness on uh, New Park Avenue. And then uh, some instruction, music instruction on New Park Avenue, but also golf instruction on New Britain Avenue. Um, and in the middle there, Kelly Burke Interiors, Home Design Services just opened up on New Britain Avenue at the corner of uh, Railroad Place. So um, you saw a number of trends there. You know, I think it's, everyone's a little disappointed we don't have more new retail in terms of stores. Um, but, you know, um, it's a changing environment for retail for sure. People are buying things differently. In the meantime, you know, we have plenty of options to eat well, work out, and uh, invest wisely. Okay, so let's talk about some new homes. 2432 Albany Avenue, also known as Bishop's Place, uh, finished last uh, August, uh, fully leased, doing incredibly well. Um, the, the market there is young professionals. They thought that's who would rent there and that is how it's turned out. Nearby, in Bishop's Corner, is 777 North Main Street, directly across the street from Big Y. Uh, five new condominium units there. I think a couple have sold so far. Uh, there will be an exact mirror building built right behind it. So in all, it will be a, a 10 unit development. Uh, construction on that second building is underway. 
243 Steel Road. Uh, this is a development by Metro Realty. Um, 160 units um, and leasing faster than they can build the units. So uh, there are six buildings and a clubhouse building, a seventh building. Uh, so far, they have uh, temporary certificates of occupancy on 110 units. They've leased 125 units. Um, this is by far is the most luxurious of the different developments in town. Um, the clubhouse is beautiful, has a pool, um, and they're expecting to be done with their final two buildings by August. If you're in the market for a condominium, Kingswood Place is a good spot, and it's still available. That's to the corner of Farmington Avenue and Bishop Road, which is uh, a little east of Tropic Drive, and also finished last year in April, um, the Landmark, 11 South Main, 21 units uh, developed by Abe Cahoon and his sons, um, underground parking, right in the heart of the center on Goodman Green. And one major development that didn't get nearly as much attention, um, but has an incredible impact for the community, um, both in terms of grandless growth, but for services too, is Brookdale Chatfield. 84 units of assisted living and memory care units, and this is right next to the uh, former Sears property on uh, New Britain Avenue. So that's the quick recap on the last year in terms of what's been done. Um, the impact has been major grandless growth. Um, combination of things that have led to a 4.3% increase in our grand list, or $259 million. Um, one is new construction, and the other is revaluation. So between the two, it generated $10 million uh, to the town for the budget year that starts on July 1. About $1.8 million is from the new construction that I've gone through. Uh, eight plus million is the value of existing buildings, uh, mainly homes, but also commercial properties throughout town. And commercial properties on average uh, increased by 24%. Different uh, classifications of property went up or down depending on location. Apartments in particular, I think, had the highest increase on average of about 30%. Homes around the center and other areas grew upwards of 30%. Other areas, uh, especially larger homes in the north part of town or the west part of town, actually dropped in value. So it was, um, it was a pretty dynamic revaluation uh, in, in the results. Okay, so let's talk about what's coming next. New retail at Corbin's Corner. Um, in January, the council approved uh, a special development district amendment to the Sears property, Heritage Growth Partners. Uh, purchased the property from Sears in 2015 and um, are moving very quickly. Uh, permits just came in this week. We're going to see construction start soon, uh, that which will renovate both the auto building and uh, the main Sears building. So top picture there, uh, I see Shake Shack um, will be in the auto building as well as a couple other smaller retailers. Um, in the top photo to the right, you see the new REI space. So REI is moving from the back square and will be on the first floor of the main Sears building. Um, the lower level of the building will be the tenant space for Cost Plus World Market and Bye Bye Baby. Picture there on the left, the signage is out front, but they'll be in the lower level of the building. Uh, Saks Off Fifth will be the other main tenant on the ground floor next to REI. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, what will start as some initial demolition of certain areas of the Sears building, which will start soon, um, followed by the renovation and tenant fit out. And this development will be open in mid-2018. OK, and uh, there are restaurants. Um, the, the pace of restaurant um, openings in West Hartford has not slowed down. Uh, slightest. Lots of things to discuss. Uh, Park Road, we're going to have zero degree Thai ice cream at 120 Park Road. There's great reuse of this building that's been um, uh, vacant for a long time, underutilized at other times, uh, but it'll be great to light that up and have an ice cream shop. Zaytun's Bistro Mediterranean Grill will be at the corner of Park Road and Oakwood Avenue next to Los Adobes. 
in Corbett's Corner, again, Shake Shack, and also we're getting close to the opening of The Simple Greek, which is on the strip uh, very close to Trader Joe's. We're gonna have a distinct Mexican flair in Bishop's Corner. Uh, Ocho Cafe will be opening soon in the former Bertucci space. Um, their taglines is tacos and tequila. Thought some folks would like that. Mo Southwest Grill is going to reopen in the former Muya space um, on the other side of Albany Avenue, uh, next to Big Y. Lots of restaurants in the center. I'm sure everyone's heard of Zohara, which is uh, going through renovations now in the former Plimpton space. That's on Farmington Avenue, and that's going to be the third restaurant by Dory Puka. Also owns Treva and Avera. Uh, right, pretty much next to that, it's going to be Donut Crazy. Um, handcrafted donuts with love. I don't, I don't know if we can get any better than that. Um, also on uh, Farmington Avenue is, is going to be Milk Craft, and this is in the former Le, Le Petit France space. Um, and then finally, um, back in the former Backstage Pizza space is going to be Vaughn's Pies and Pints. So um, has, has everyone been to Vaughn's in downtown Hartford? You're familiar with that? So this is Johnny Vaughn. He's the owner. I was very excited when he got in touch with me and said he was going to be opening up here. Uh, I will have to admit, though, when, when he said it was going to be called Pies and Pints, I wasn't thinking pizza. I was thinking Guinness and Shepherd's Pie. But <laughs> pizza's good, too. Um, on the Salle Road, um, two new restaurants coming our way. One is going to be um, Harvest, uh, which will be down close to uh, Brico. And the other near Savoy will be Division West. In a blue back, we're getting closer to the Cook and the Bear opening up on the corner of um, Raymond Road and Memorial, across from the Del Mar site. This is the former Pearl Grill space. Um, and across from REI, a little further down on Raymond Road, is Deadbolt Bar and Grill. Um, right there, you'll see it's showing the uh, Del Mar's temporary office. It'll be in, in that space there. And what's interesting with that is it's going to be the same ownership as the skeleton key, right at the corner there, an adventure emporium. Are folks familiar with escape rooms? Yes. I got one, yes, that's good, all right. So nodding heads, excellent. So we're gonna have two escape rooms fairly soon. Um, so the Deadbolt Cafe, a Deadbolt Grill and a skeleton key will be connected internally through a door. Um, they wanted to be able to combine it into one uh, operation, but our zoning regulations do not uh, provide for indoor recreation and food and drink working together easily. Um, Mission Escape uh, is going to be on the second floor above Brico at 76 LaSalle Road. Um, they don't serve food and drink, and so um, that's not part of their, their, um, their mission, I guess. I guess. Um, so I these sort of uses have come to us, you know, um, new types of entertainment space, um, and we need to figure out a way in which we can facilitate more of this. But we also want to be able to provide you know, a full experience of, of um, food and drink to go with it as well. So the council has directed us to um, work on a draft ordinance that we'll be bringing to them that will look at how some spaces can combine uses in a way that haven't been done in the past to help promote these fun and exciting uh, tenants. Um, we have two properties in particular that we think could make use of having some additional flexibility in how they can be tenanted. One is the REI space, and the other is the uh, former Walmart space in Bishop's Corner. So I think we're getting closer to uh, submitting something to the council that will facilitate some more fun spaces like these. And we have a new office building under construction. 312 North Main Street is going to be the new home of Companions for Living. Um, Site work has begun, had a groundbreaking a couple of weeks ago. Um, it will be a small office. It will be designed to look like a home, as you see right there, which is a perfect complement to the neighborhood uh, just to the south of Bishop's Corner. So it's on a formerly wooded lot right next to the drive aisle for Walgreens, and it should blend in perfectly uh, with the neighborhood. And so more condominiums. Corner of Farmington Avenue and Arlington. Um, ARDG LLC is developing uh, eight condominiums in this building. Currently, there's a home and a uh, former doctor's office that have been for sale for many years. Um, they have an agreement to purchase and they have a site plan approval
for this building, which would be eight condominiums um, with underground parking. Uh, fits in well. It's in a, a stretch of multifamily housing on Farmington Avenue heading west out of the center. Also, um, Town Plan Zoning Commission recently uh, granted wetland approval and a special use permit for an open space development at the Glad Hill Nursery site. So you see here a, a rendering of, of the home type that will be built. It will be a private community, private road, 15 new homes, um, four of which are uh, attached. Um, it's called the cluster, uh, it's an open space development which allows the homes to be clustered and that needed to be done in this case because it's a sensitive site with wetlands and uh, floodplain issues to, to address. Okay, and the Delamar West Hartford. We're getting closer to that opening. We have some updated pictures here. This is looking uh, from uh, the intersection of Memorial and Raymond. Um, slated to be uh, finished this summer. It'll be 114 rooms. Uh, looking at that picture, the lower left would be the front door. The lower right in that wing will be uh, a restaurant called Artisan. It'll also be a flower shop. And from the south, you see uh, the banquet side of the building. That whole lower level there will be a banquet facility that will uh, seat, on, I think it's 250. Where's da Daniel? will confirm that for me. But 200, seat 250, Daniel? Yeah. Plus or minus, I got it close enough? OK, good. All right, so um, we're really looking forward to that. In addition to the 114 rooms within that, there are about a dozen or so extended stay apartments on the upper floors, too. So we're very excited about uh, seeing this completed soon. OK, on the horizon. I have to admit I cheated. I used the very same slide last year. Um, Transit-oriented development. That's what we're really pursuing on New Park Avenue. TOD is a type of community development that includes a mixture of housing, office, and retail, and other amenities integrated into a walkable neighborhood located within a half a mile of quality public transportation. So that's, that's what we're striving for on uh, New Park Avenue. So we've got the transit. For two years now, we've just had the two-year anniversary of Fast Track. On the left is the Flatbush Station. On the right is the Elmwood Station. And what's coming next is the Hartford uh, Rail Line. Very excited about that. Um, this will be situated um, at the Flatbush Station. So it will be on the other side of the train tracks from the Flatbush CT uh, Fast Track Station. Accessible by car off of Newfield Avenue in Hartford, but the, but the two stations will be connected. So you'd be able to go from one to the other on foot, which is important. So the current status of this rail station, which I think is going to be really transformative for West Hartford, um, is uh, they're in design right now. Uh, the state has fully funded the design. Uh, we're being told by DOT that they'll be at a 60% design level by fall, and at that point um, be ready to begin to share um, their perspectives and get feedback on the design. The construction is not funded yet. That's the next step. So the rail line itself, the New Haven, Hartford, Springfield uh, line, goes into service January of 2018. Uh, but it'll be a few more years after that before we have the West Hartford Station constructed. So right across from that area, of course, um, I call this slide the chicken and beer. We've got uh, New Park Brewing, which just opened. I'm sure most of you have heard of this, uh, getting rave reviews, and that's in 485 New Park, right across the street from uh, the station. Um, Cumberland Farms, perhaps the most popular place for gas and coffee these days. Uh, which is certainly not transit-oriented development by any means. I don't want to pretend that it is, um, but it most certainly cleaned up a, a, a bit of a blighted corner there at the corner of Flatbush Avenue and, um, and New Park, and it's bringing people in in droves. So lots of good things happening on the north end of the corridor around, around the Flatbush Station area. And to the south, more great news. We've got the construction start of 616 New Park. Um, this will be a 54 unit mixed income, mixed use building that started um, about a month or so ago. Should take about 18 months to complete. So we're looking at completion at the end of 2018. Uh, 54 units, 80% of them will be affordable and there'll be 3,000 uh, square feet of retail as well. Right up on the building, uh, the building will be right up on the street 
um, which is really important in, in this particular area near the transit station and near New Britain Avenue. So, and we have another unique opportunity pretty much across the street here at 637 New Park. Have folks um, heard of the food truck ordinance that went into effect? Yeah? Okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> applause. Did you hear that, Mayor? <laughs> okay. So uh, the food truck ordinance was, was approved by the council uh, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and it permits food trucks to operate in the town of West Hartford in three specific scenarios all of which would be in the industrial zone, the southeast quadrant of town. Um, with a permit from the police department and the health department, a um, food truck can be on a number of streets that are low volume streets in the industrial zone, okay? Um, so it will not, no food trucks will be on a busy street. There are a handful of streets where they'd be eligible to park on street. And then you could have no more than two parked on the same street and certain limitations on how they can operate in the operating hours and so forth. Second type is what we call an accessory use. So a food truck can be in a parking lot of a commercial development, provided that they get a zoning permit and can demonstrate that the food truck in the parking lot is not gonna be detrimental to the site plan operations of that parking lot. We wouldn't wanna have a food truck causing problems for pedestrians and vehicles on, on a Saturday afternoon. And then thirdly is a food truck park. So it's something that was brought to us by uh, Tate Norton, who is the owner of Iron and Grain. They did a lot of research on what some other communities are doing related to food truck parks. So again, if there's the right property in the industrial area, a food truck park can be developed with a whole number of different um, requirements for the number of trucks that could be there, hours of operation, would still have to meet all site plan requirements. Um, the Tate's identified this particular property and it's been made known that he's looking to establish a food truck park here at 637 New Park. We have a ways to go, have to see how it would work on the site um, in relation to site plan requirements and the ordinance requirements, but um, it's, uh, it's an exciting opportunity. The lower left picture there is, is just one I pulled from, I think it's uh, Honolulu, but it, it shows, you know, it, you have three or four trucks and picnic tables and an area for people to come and hang out and have some good food. Uh, one of the important restrictions um, for the food truck park, if there is one, or food trucks selling on the street is that it can't be um, less than 500 feet away from an existing restaurant. That's one of the criteria for, the, um, for a permit. Okay, so good things happening on the north end of New Park Ave, good things on the south end, and now we're trying to pull it all together. I've talked at this um, event a number of times in the past about what we want to try and do to make New Park Avenue more uh, pedestrian friendly. I see our good friends from Fuss and O'Neill are here who uh, worked with our town planner on our New Park Avenue Complete Street Study, which, is, which was completed a couple of months ago. Um, it does have a preferred alternative for uh, reducing travel lanes between Talcott and um, just north of New Britain Avenue adding bike lanes, and just improving the street environment to create a more pedestrian investment friendly uh, corridor. Um, the timing is working out well. Uh, we're gonna be able to use that study now to apply for state funds to try and implement this um, on a construction basis. So we'll be looking to make an application um, by June uh, to the State Office of Policy and Management that could, could fund this. Um, we'll see. Okay, so the center. How many folks were here last year and were bored by me talking about FAR? Yeah? The mayor was bored, okay. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Okay, so here's the deal. The center, we have demand to build multifamily housing in the center, whether apartments or condominiums. The, the demand is there. Um, it's been demonstrated to us. Um, the particular challenge we have is that the the current zoning regulations and the density requirements and the FAR in particular, I won't get into it, you know, is a little bit restrictive and doesn't allow for the type of development that would be needed, which would include structured parking to be able to build sizable buildings where people could live. Um, and so two ordinances went to the council last year. Um, one was withdrawn and when the opposition came out about it. 
and then a developer and owner of a property came forward with, with an ordinance and that uh, request was defeated. Um, and so the council directed us to uh, reach out to the public and that's what we've been doing and are just wrapping up uh, a major outreach initiative related to the center. Um, we are, let's see, the, the response to our efforts was, was really um, fantastic and much greater than we thought it would be. We had a public forum with close to 100 people that came. We did an online survey and got more than 700 replies. We have, we're working with a working group all along and we developed a draft vision and guiding principles um, for the center uh, that can be used going forward and provide good information to the council as it considers things in the future. And we had 130 people send us email comments about that draft vision and statement. So um, we are compiling all that and we'll be submitting um, that report to the council uh, by the end of next week is our goal. So the big takeaways from it are really this. Through our survey of over 700 people, you know, we asked you know, what their perspective and goals were for the center. And more than 60% of respondents thought that the center should grow. The vast majority of those think it should, be, should, it should grow incrementally, not radically. Some think it should grow radically, but predominantly folks are telling us we want to have responsible growth, we want more people in the center, um, but it needs to be done smartly. Um, the other thing we heard, and it wasn't a surprise, is we have to figure out how to deal with parking. We've got challenges with parking in terms of the number of people coming in cars. We understand that. We're working on some new ideas in which we can try and get more service workers to park in off-street lots. Um, and we also know that any sizable building built would need to have structured parking. So at the moment, structured parking is counted in the density calculation for development. So right now, it would penalize a developer if a parking garage is factored into the floor area ratio requirement that we use. So we know we've got to figure out a way that we can try and incentivize good, responsible, incremental growth in the center and also deal with the parking that has to be associated with it. Okay, transition. And I don't mean the men's basketball team. Okay, UConn, beautiful site, right? Look at that. We've been working on this for quite a while now, and I'm sure uh, most of you have heard um, that we have a new deal structured um, with UConn. So just to set everyone's parameters, we're dealing with a 58-acre parcel on both sides of Tropic Drive, five buildings of approximately 200,000 square feet, Lots of deferred maintenance with them. You may have heard we've had some environmental issues that we've had to look at. And the property is currently zoned for single family residential. So last year in July, we uh, came to an agreement with UConn to purchase it for $5 million. Um, however, two main things um, changed that and resulted and prompted a renegotiation of that purchase price. Uh, one was what we found during our due diligence related to um, the condition of the buildings and um, what we need to deal with in the soil around the buildings, uh, but also the uncertainty related to uh, the state budget process and now how that impacts the town's budget process. So on Tuesday evening, the, um, the town council uh, approved the renegotiation and amendment to the purchase and sale agreement to make the purchase price $1 million. UConn's board of trustees um, did the same on Wednesday. And so now we are working to amend that contract and be on a path to do a final purchase in October for a total of $1 million. So more to come on this. For some time now, we've been saying we're, we, we're going to need to do community outreach related to this, but we haven't been able to because the due diligence was still going on and on. But I think uh, once we have an updated um, purchase and sale agreement to reflect the new price and any conditions associated with that, we'll be ready to talk to the community about what folks think are the best uses for the property. Um, I think we've reached a point where our feeling is, given the liabilities on the site, um, that the west side should be developed. And if we were to do that, we would have potential revenue to be able to develop the east side for perhaps more recreation facilities. So that is a backdrop. Um, we'll get to what that could be and how that might look and how long that might take you know, in the next several months. Okay, 
So, just to wrap up, major grand list growth, but still, even in this fully built town, you know, opportunities for transformative developments at, in the center, at UConn, and on New Park Avenue. Um, are we reach, reaching a restaurant bubble? I don't know. I, I, I don't know, but I think everyone in this room is going out to dinner more and more. Um, and you know, we should point out that you know, Money Magazine um, rated us the 15th best place to live among small cities in the country last year in September. That's pretty heady stuff. Uh, that tells me things are going pretty well. And with that, I'd love to take a few questions. Rosemary. Okay, that's Arcadia Crossing. I did speak quite a bit about that last year. There is an approval in place for that uh, project, um, but there hasn't been much that's changed since this time last year. They're still putting together the financing necessary to do the renovation of the convent there and build the addition on the building. Um, that's at the corner of Park and Prospect. It would be 300 and 320 apartment units. So I didn't include that in the show today because um, there hasn't been a, a major step forward to report. Sure. Yeah, so the question was whether or not we're doing anything else um, related to getting more people to come to the center in different forms of transportation and not drive and not need to park. Um, Uber was mentioned. Um, we're not specifically working on anything like that. Um, but we are building out um, our park, our Truffrook Trail, um, which will bring more people to the center uh, through a trail and could ride or walk to the center. Um, what we did see in our outreach on the center um, initiative is that a lot of people do walk. I think more and more people are walking. Um, and that makes more sense other times of the year, obviously. Um, our focus at the moment is trying to get specific cars in different locations to free up spaces on street and in parking lots for, uh, for customers. So. Yes. Um, but not recently. It, it, it goes back a number of years. Oh, the question is, I'm sorry. The question is whether or not the town's been approached about having pedicabs. So, um, not recently. Um, <laughs> Mayor tells me there was an ordinance in the past. That I think it was before my time, which goes back more than four years now. Um, Yeah. So they work financially. Yeah. What is the deal? Okay. It would. The challenge is getting people to actually use it. I mean, that's the big. That's the big challenge. I think people are still looking for the convenience, and they would rather go and try and get that prime space and circle the block a few times before <laughs> b before they decide to park in a satellite lot and get on a bus. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's issue that's frequently looked at, but just awfully difficult to execute. Yeah. Yes, we're, we're actually working on that now. Um, we're, we're, we're at the very start um, with some restaurants who are interested. We're trying to work it out with a particular property owner where the cars could be parked. Um, once we get a little further, we'll be able to come out to more businesses and see what other demand there might be. So we're, we're getting closer to that. <laughs> yeah, what took so long? Dog car question. Um, there's no current initiative underway to site a dog park. I think it was last year after the last go around didn't, didn't work out. Uh, the council decided we're putting this issue on hold for now, having staff work on other issues. Um, I think the dog park um, issues initiative will come back again with the Yukon site. So I certainly, with 58 acres there, there's a new opportunity to site a park there where we wouldn't have been able to in the past. So I, I think that one's likely to come back. Yeah. Right, so going back probably about six months now or so, there may be more. Um, there have been pop-up dog parks where different, uh, moving around the town, utilizing different fields in parks. Uh, the dark Dog Park Coalition has been sponsoring um, events, typically on, on, on weekends, am I right? On Saturdays, typically? Right. Yeah, we, we struggle a little bit in the, in the area of the center, given the 
width of the right of way and our ability to manage cars and bicycles there. So the Trout Brook Trail is going to be helpful in that regard, having a north-south connection that will come to the center. We are beginning to, re, um, to build the Trout Brook Trail from Farmington Avenue up to Asylum. Uh, that will start this summertime. Um, so I would encourage you, we have a, uh, a complete streets policy and a bike facilities plan. I don't know if you've seen that. But it identifies all of the, the routes that we intend to build over time. So we're typically um, installing bike lanes um, when we're working on the roads. Okay, for instance, so we've done that in King Philip. We're going to build more of King Philip, and so when we do it, we've got the room. We're going to be putting bike lanes there. Uh, we've started on Ridgewood. That will continue this year as well. Um, so you'll see on that bicycle facility plan um, what our goals are over time, and that was something that was worked out with the Pedestrian and Bicycle Advisory Committee. Um, I'd like to thank uh, all of our sponsors. Um, I'd also like to thank our mayor and our town council who support the Community Development Department. I'd like to uh, also uh, identify Christian Gorski, our economic development specialist, who's doing a great job and helped me out tremendously with this presentation. Um, and um, lastly, I'd like to, to mention that um, our town manager is retiring. I'm sure everyone knows that. Um, Ron Van Winkle, after 30 years, is retiring. And there's going to be a great party on May 30th at the Town Hall Auditorium. I don't think anyone has done more for economic development um, in town than Ron Van Winkle. So hopefully you can all join us on that evening. <laughs>